thank you, Spirit of God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We honor your name for the gift of life. We worship you for all the wonderful work done. Be thou magnified, be exalted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we give you glory, we magnify your name for your mercy and your favor. Be thou magnified, be exalted. Prince of peace, King of glory, the I am that I am, the eternal rock of aging, we give you all the glory. Spirit of God, breathe on us one more time. As we are about to release the word of God to your people, we pray for your spirit to grant us access, mercy and favor so we could be able to speak your word without fear. You have sent out to the world with the command to go and preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the broken hearted and set the captives free. So tonight in the name of Jesus, let the captive be set free. Let the broken hearted be healed. Let the bond slaves be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we thank you. What else can we do without your power, without your presence? For that matter, we pray that you may take control in the name of Jesus. And all those who will be sharing this live broadcast, Father Lord, who will come across this live broadcast, I pray for their deliverance. I pray for their miracles. I pray that you, Lord God, will stretch forth your hand and do unto them as your heart and their heart desire in the name of Jesus. Now every foul spirit will speak to the atmospheric power. We seize the oppression of witches and wizards tonight. We place an injunction on the oppression of the enemy. Satan will speak to you that you will not move, you will not utter a word until the cause of God has taken full dominion. In the name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the gift of life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, one more time. Welcome to this live broadcast. This is the prophet of God, John Bright Fiapume, reaching out to you from Pando Volta region precisely. Tonight, I am with you one more time to pray with you and also to share the word of God with you. So wherever you are, Invite somebody and let somebody invite somebody. Share the broadcast. God will reward you. Bible said, We shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And so, therefore, distance is not a barrier. So, as you are watching me right now, be connected. Let your spirit, your soul be connected with the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And you will have your own share of the testimony. In the name of Jesus. Tonight we are going to deal with some serious issues here tonight. So I want to put somebody in the prayer mood. Hallelujah. We are going to deal with accusers. Amen. So tonight's team is taking the evidence out of the accusers' hand. Hallelujah. So let's take our reading from the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. Our God is good. Share the broadcast, invite somebody. 2 Kings chapter number 4. Reading from verse number 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, thy, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons, be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do unto thee? Hallelujah. I'll tell the reading again. Amen. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. Tonight we are going to pray. And I want to share with you what I title Taking the Evidence Out of the Accuser's Hand. Child of God, 
Bible let us understand in the book of Job, chapter number one, that when the sons of God gathered, Satan was found among them. When the sons of God gathered, Satan was found among them. He was found among who? The sons of God. And who were the sons of God? Or who were those sons of God Bible is talking about? It was talking about the angel, the celestial beings. Hallelujah. Bible says when they gathered together in the presence of God, <laughs> Satan was found among them. And the Lord asked him, Where come it thou? He said, I came to and fro the land. And he said, Have you observed? Have you seen my servant Job? Have you considered him? He's still holding on to the righteousness of God. And Satan said to God, Look, you are he that is protecting this man. He is with you, he is worshipping you, he is living a just life because you are protecting him. It's because of the wealth and the riches that he's enjoying from you. So allow me to torture him. Allow me to inflict pains on him. Allow me to torture some of the things that gives him hope to claim that he loves you, God, and you he will deny you to your face. Hallelujah. So, and the, and the Bible said, and the Lord said to him, Go and do whatever that pleases you. But as for his life, I did not deliver unto your heart. Now, when we talk about accusers, accusers are people who present issues against you without cause, with false evidence. People who present issues, allegations against you without a cause, without any cause, with false evidence. Those are the people we call accusers. And one of the accusers we have in our time contending with is Satan and his cause. Hallelujah. So tonight, we are going to pray some strategic prayers. Tonight, every evidence that the enemy is using against us, against our life, our loved ones, against our progress, our next level, against our, our upliftment, against our career, our marriage, against our finance, we are going to take the evidence out of their hand. You see, you can't go to court without evidence. Satan doesn't have power. He doesn't have any might, but he uses accusation. He uses false evidence against us. And some of the false evidence I'm going to present to you tonight, I'm going to define to you tonight. Hallelujah, somebody. So Satan is the accuser, child of God. This thing I am telling you tonight, you have to adhere to it and join us in, in prayer so we can depopulate and put Satan where he belongs. Hallelujah, somebody. Bible said it came to a time in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 4, verse number 1. Bible said it came to a time that a woman of God or a woman who was a wife of a prophet, he ran to Elisha and said to Elisha, man of God, mm, Man of God, a creditors came to take my children. What are the creditors came to take the children for? Bible said, and the woman said, My husband borrowed money. Hmm? My husband borrowed money. My husband has entered into agreement with money lenders without letting us know. And he knew the destiny, the future, the life, the progress, the prosperity of the children as a collateral. That should, in case I was not, I'm not able to pay the money, come and take my children. Instead, instead of the money. Hallelujah. Come and take my children in place of the money. Am I talking to somebody tonight? So, the, the, the moment this man died, who was this woman, This man? This man is a prophet. Maraka Sunday. This man was a prophet of God. This man was a man of God. 
Because when the woman went to him, he said to him, you know that my husband feared God and he is one of he was his among the sons of the prophet. So the one who went to borrow this money and lose the life, the destiny of the children as a collateral in exchange of money was a prophet of God. Was a child of God. He was a child of God, a prophet of God, the one that says and it's coming to pass. Yet he is living a borrowing life. Accusation. The moment the man died, the creditors came to take the children into captivity, to hold the children captive. They came to the woman and said to the woman, Woman, your husband has entered into agreement with us. He came and borrowed money from us and said with a condition that if I am not able to pay the money, how can a man of God, how can a child of God, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, and also be in good health as your soul prospereth. And when he created them, he blessed them and said to them, multiply, subdue, dominate, dominate. Hallelujah, somebody. Replenish the earth. So God gave authority to man to rule and to dominate the earth. So as a child of God, you have what it takes. You have the power. You have the oil. You have the grace to dominate the human realm. Am I talking to somebody? To dominate the human realm. But here lies the case. This man of God was living a borrowing life. He prophesied to people and it came to pass. He laid hands on people and they were delivered. He said things and it came to pass. Yet he himself, Karosin de Baraba, he himself was living in an abject poverty. He himself was living in the in a cruel condition, a condition of disgrace, a condition of disgrace and dishonor. Bible said a prophet is without honor. So there is no prophet without honor. He said a prophet is without honor, except in his own household, in his own own kindred among his own people. So if you are a prophet of God, you must command honor. You must command honor. You must command blessings. You must command attention. That is the work of the prophet. That is the portion of the prophet. It is not me that write the Bible. That was what Christ says. That a prophet is without honor. Am I talking to somebody? But this prophet of God was living a life of destitute. Was living a life life of rejection, was living a life of disgrace, was living a life of lack and scarcity, uh, to the extent that he had to go. People who are supposed to come to us, people who are supposed to eat from our table, people who are supposed to sleep in our room, we have become their subject. We are rather running to them. We are rather seeking for help from them. That was exactly what happened to the prophet of God. Mm. That was exactly what happened to the man of God. Bible said, and he ran to a lender, a borrower. And when they ask for collateral, you can't borrow without the collateral. Collateral stands as a witness in terms of the blessing or replacement of whatever you have come to borrow the money or whatever you have come to borrow. So, should in case you are not able to, to return the money or to refund the money, then whatever you use as a collateral will be take ransom. Hallelujah, somebody. So, this man of God, he used the destiny, the life of the children. When he went to the money lenders and they required for collateral and he had none to offer, my God, 
Tell yourself I refuse to be poor. Tell yourself I reject to be poor. Because as a child of God as you are, you can never be poor. Lack is not your portion. Scarcity is not your portion. Setback is not your portion. Rising and falling is not your portion. Disgrace is not your portion. Mockery is not your portion. For the Lord has made everything beautiful. For there is nothing a man shall receive except that which is given to him from above. So our source is from above. Our source is not here. God is our source. Humans are his sources. Am I talking to somebody? But this man of God who says yes thing and it happened, who says yes thing and it comes to pass, this man of God was living in poverty. I pray to I pray for somebody tonight. Whatever you are watching me, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every spirit of poverty over your life, your loved ones, your family, your loved ones, your children, your husband, your ministry, whatever, in the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of poverty, I break the spirit of scarcity, I break the spirit of rejection, in the name of the Lord Jesus, from tonight I decree over your life, no more poverty, no more delay, no more rejection, no more scarcity, in the name of Jesus, hey, I pray for somebody, I I enforce the blood. I super invoke the blood over your life tonight. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you will not borrow. I said you will not borrow. I said you will not borrow. And the Bible said, David said, since I was born, now that I become old, I have never seen the righteous beg for bread. The righteous forsaken, you will not be forsaken. Neither your children beg for bread. Your children will not beg for bread. In the name of Jesus, you will not live a destitute life. In the name of Jesus, you are born to clothe others, not to be clothed. You are born to feed others, not to be fed. That's why the Bible said, and the Bible said, the Lord shall prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. After you descend on the food, after you eat your, and you are, your, your belly is satisfied, your enemies are there to pack the table. So you are the breadwinner to your family. In the name of Jesus, from tonight, every spirit of liability, working in your life, eh? operating in your destiny, operating in your marriage, operating in your career. I bring them to an end. I put them to an end. In the name of Jesus, I don't know the accusation the enemy has laid against you. I don't know the evidence they are using against you. But I come in the power of the Most High. David said, ah, you saw you, you this Philistines. You have come against me in the name of your God. But I have come in the name of the God that is above every other God, the God of all flesh, the God that created everything. Today I will kill you. I come to you tonight in the power of Jehovah to present the word of God, to present power to you that after tonight, in the name of Jesus, you are accident, accident free, you are poverty free, you will not be poor again. Spirit of poverty is broken off your life, spirit of setback is broken off your life, spirit of rejection is broken off of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, he that the son of the Lord shall save, he shall be saved indeed. For upon Zion there shall be deliverance and the house of Jacob, they shall possess their position. I command your deliverance. I command your deliverance. For the Bible says from the east, the Lord commanded his blessing. I see God commanding his blessing upon you. I see God pouring his blessing upon you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. One thing I know about God. He doesn't consider your past. He doesn't consider your present. He doesn't take permission from any man. He will not take permission from your father. He will not take permission from your mother to do what pleases him. I see God doing something in your life. God is turning your life around. I see you sharing that testimony that you have been praying for right now. I see you sharing that testimony that you have been yearning to right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy to you every evil accusation, every evil Evil accusation, every evil evidence uh, used against your forefather, used against your mother, still operating in your life. We set it ablaze. We set it ablaze. We set fire on that evidence. Every false evidence. We set you ablaze in the name of Jesus. Taking the, 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 the evidence. If you are watching me right now, 
Every evidence, we are going to pray. As you are watching me begin to pray, I want you to connect yourself. I want you to dive into the spirit. I want you to be in the prayer mode. Because the enemy we are dealing with is not fair. The enemy is not fair. He is not fair at all. He is not merciful at all. He doesn't have sympathy. He doesn't have anything to do with pity. The enemy will not have mercy on you. If he will have mercy on you, he will not allow you. He will not put you into that condition. So you must get angry. You must get angry in the spirit to put the enemy where he belongs. So you can take your position. You can possess your position. He said, Upon Zion, there shall be deliverance. Obadiah 1 17. And the house of Jacob. Today is no longer the house of Jacob. Mention your name and say, Tonight, ah, I am coming free. I am coming out. I am receiving my deliverance. Deliverance from the poverty. Deliverance from the hands of the witches. Deliverance from the hands of the enemy. Setback is no longer your portion. Rejection is no longer your portion. Promise and faith is no longer your portion. Look at your life. When people promise you, they promise you with all their heart as if tomorrow they will do it. But when the time comes for them to do what they have promised, they are nowhere to be found. Child of God, I want to bring to your notice that the enemy is using something against you. Satan is using an evidence against you. That is why they call them the accuser of the brethren. Nobody accuses without an evidence. What makes you an accuser is an evidence. But the evidence he's using against us is a false evidence. Because one of the days, I read in the Bible that the fathers shall not eat the strong grip and the teeth of the children shall be set on edge. He said, as I live, say yes, the Lord, he that sin must die for their sin. Even as the book of Lamentation says, the fathers are sin and, the, and, the, and they die. They are no more. And the iniquity has come upon the children. This is this time, not again, no more, not again, because we are setting a limit for the oppression of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Evidence or no evidence, we are breaking through, we are breaking forth, we are breaking out in the name of Jesus. I am born to manifest the power of God. I am born for a purpose. You are born for a purpose. Your existence is not accidental. Your existence is not coincidental. Your existence is a purpose. It's for a purpose. You are purposed to be purpose. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. God purposed you to be purpose. So you are purpose of God to be purpose on earth. So I prophesy to somebody tonight, watching me wherever you are, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anything Satan is doing with your life, any mess up is playing with you, is doing over your life tonight by the unction of the Lord Almighty. Well, I invite the oil of my ordination. I invoke the oil of my ordination uh, with the conjunction of the oil upon them, my head and uh, by my father, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. I break you through in the name of Jesus. Evidence. False evidence. Taking the evidence out of the accuser's hand. The reason the lenders were able to come to the woman to take their children out of their mother's house and their father's house to slavery was because of an evidence. And what is that evidence? The evidence is that there was an agreement, there was a document, there are documents something, there was a documentary that stated that your father came to borrow from us. And the condition attached to the borrowing is that should in case I was I couldn't pay the money, should in case I was not able to pay the money, may you come and take my children. How could the prophet of God, how could someone who has been anointed? with oil in order that David said when the death of Saul was announced to David I could remember David said oh Saul, oh Saul why hast thou died as somebody who has not been anointed which means that no anointed man of God ah, could live a borrowing life nobody God does not save us to enslave us God never save us to 
enslave us. So for the fact that I am saved, that not make me a slave again. You are saved and you are saved forever. You are free and you are free forever. Am I talking to somebody? How could a man of God, a man who is ordained to speak to people, to speak for people, to bless others, to change life, to change destiny, to say, to declare, thou sayest the Lord. How could a man of that caliber be living a borrowing life, be living on, on this borrowing borrow from people? Ah, somebody that's supposed to be an answer to people has now become a liability. I prophesy this day, you will not be a liability. Enemy, the enemy has messed up with you for long, and the time has come. This is the, now is it for us to rise and put the enemy where he belongs? Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? The moment the man dies, the moment the lender's head, that the borrower, the, 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 the lender has died, they came quickly to the house of God, the house of the man of God, and said to the wife, Hey woman, we have come to seize your children. We have come to take your children into captive. From today, your children are no longer yours but ours. And the woman said to them, Why are you doing this? What is your evidence? Present your evidence. And they presented their evidence and said, Watch, this is the evidence. The evidence we have against your house. The evidence we have against your children. This is the evidence that your husband came to us and borrowed money and used the life of his children and used the future of his children and used the destiny of his children as a collateral in exchange of money that should in case if he is not able to pay the money and should come for their children for his children. That is why I am here and the woman has no option but than to plead uh, for, for God than to, 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 to call God cause attention. The woman has no option than to cry unto the Lord immediately when the people came. He ran to the man of God. He said, man of God, you know my husband is among the sons of the prophet. My husband is one of the prophets. My husband is among the prophets who prophesied in this town. But there is an issue. There came an issue against us this day. Our eyes are seeing what we are not expecting. Our ears are hearing what we are not expecting. My husband has borrowed money and used the life of the children and used the destiny of the children as a collateral. So the lenders came to take my children into captivity. They came to seize my children. Man of God, do something. I have a good news tonight. The good news is that even though they have raised false accusation against you, they have raised false accusation, they have raised false evidences against you, but the good news is that even though they were able to present their cause to the man of God, they were able to present their cause to the man of God. The man of God was able to do something. I prophesy as a man of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you be free from every accusation. May you be free from every attack. May you be free from the, the beam of every power of darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Share the broadcast. Mr. Haibo, God bless you. God bless you, Danny, Bill, Danny Billion. God bless you. God bless you all for watching. Join us. Let's pray. Because it is our time. Bible said, and it shall come to pass in the last day that the Lord shall pour his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters they shall prophesy. Your, the young men they shall they shall see vision. And the old men shall dream dreams. And we are in the era of the prophetic. We are in the era of the apostolic. So we have the grace to speak the mind of God. Am I talking to somebody? We are working on evil evidences in the name of Jesus. When an accuser rise against you, <laughs> if somebody makes himself an accuser against you, you are in trouble. Accusers are people <laughs> who never want you to progress. <laughs> that accuser I am talking about could be your friend, your best friend. It could be your best friend. It could even be your sister, your brother, your church member. The what? You see, David said something the other day. He said, God, if this thing I am passing through, 
If this thing that is happening to me should, should come from the camp of my enemy, I will know how to hide myself. <laughs> I will know how to order my steps. But this thing is not. It is my acquaintance, my own friend, the one who we work together, the, the one who fellowship with me in the same place is the one who raised against me. It's a sad people. The only thing that can settle them, the only thing that can place them where they belong, is a let death sit on them. Let death come upon them and away. It's a let sudden death sit upon them, come upon them and away. Am I talking to somebody? Lebarus Kabayan Lelemish. Accusers. Accusers are people who never wanted to progress. Accusers are um, um, amplifiers of false issues, false messages, false rumor. Accusers are people who amplify, they escalate, they, they, they spread abroad rumors against you. Rumors. Anything they hear about you, they won't take time to investigate. They won't come to you to ask, ask, ask about it. They will just go about saying what they pleases them. People who never want you to progress and they are always digging pits for you. They are always seeking for your downfall. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God will discommunicate them, will disconnect them, will disengage them will dislocate them in the name of Jesus. Accusers are killers. Anyone who is an accuser is a killer. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, the accuser of the brethren, wherever there is accuser, there is chaos, there is pain, there is rejection, there is setback, because they will try every means, every possible means to pull you down, but you will not go down. Ah, if I did not go down, you will not go down. I prophesy to you <laughs> by the oil of my ordination that any accuser that is trying to maneuver this way to bring you down, they will land in disgrace and shame. I said they will land in disgrace and shame in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight I want you to rise to your feet. I want you to rise to your feet so we can pray. Accusers are enemies. Sometimes you don't know them. We call them secret enemies. They will hide around you. They will, they will look around you. They will be with you in the same company, in the same house, in the same church. But they are the one who are responsible for your downfall. You know, that you see that other day, that that man promised to give you that money. That man promised you marriage. Suddenly the man has changed his mind. Do you know why? You think it is an enemy from somewhere. No, there's an accuser set against you. There's an accuser set against you. There's a monitoring power. One of their names is monitors. Every accuser is a monitor. They will be monitoring you. They will set people around you to be monitoring you, to be checking you. Any slight mistake, they will amplify it. You see the other time, you give them money. You help them for some way, but they will never say that one. They will never share that one. They will never amplify that one. But any time they get a little mistake about you, they know something little about you, they want to capitalize on it and destroy your life. But let me tell you something. Ah, he that the Lord God has established, no man can bring down. That's why the Bible says, He that is from above is above all. From tonight, carry this grace to be above your enemy. From tonight, I said, carry this grace. Receive the anointing. Receive the power to be above your enemy. Then from this day, may you trouble upon them. May you walk upon them. May you march on them. May you navigate through them. You are unstoppable as unstoppable from this day. You are unstoppable from this day. Accusers. Every evil accusation. Evil evidence. You see, let me tell you. The reason they came to take the children was because they have an evidence. What evidence is the enemy uses against you? Against you? What is the evidence is the enemy using against your family? What was the evidence is the enemy using against your children? 
There is an evidence. Anytime Satan is doing something in your life, anytime your life is being messed up by the enemy, be rest assured that there is something the enemy is using against you. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 49, chapter number 24 to 26, it said, Shall the lawful captive be delivered? And be the prey taken away from the terrible. Lawful, the word is lawful captive. <laughs> Which means some people are in captivity lawfulness. It is lawful for some of the people to go into captivity, to go into that problem, to go into that shame, to go into that disgrace. Because what could make somebody's pain, rejection, tears, weeping, eh? what could make them legal? What could make something legal? Yet the Bible is saying, <laughs> shall the lawful captive, lawful, lawful captive be delivered. You see, some of the time, your grandfathers, your grandmother, they went to a shrine. Whilst you were not, you, you were not yet born, they went to a deity <laughs> and enter into agreement with them. And I'm explaining the operation of the evidence to you. That this is the family. We are suffering. We are going to battle. Grant us power and protection. And help we and our children as a servant forever. We will worship you from generation to generation. Anyone that failed to worship you, deal with that person. And they, they sacrifice, they begin the destiny of their unborn generations on the altar of a deity, on an evil altar. <laughs> so when you are born, that demon has an evidence. Your fathers came to us, your mothers came to us, your grandfathers came to us, and they enter into agreement with us. That we should give them power and protection so that they may be able to overcome their enemy. And if we do that, the whole family will be subject to us. They will worship us. And we did. So you were a born slave. That is what the Bible called them. Those are the people the Bible is describing as a lawful captive. They are in that captive lawfulness because somebody has agreed. To give to send his people to give his, his family as a sacrifice in a state of power. Am I talking to somebody? Evidence. How could our father sin and they are no more? I'll be dealing with the sins of our fathers. How could our father sin? The fathers are sin and they are no more. Then why, since they are no more, why should the children bear the iniquity upon themselves? Why should the children carry the iniquity of the fathers upon themselves? Why they are no more? But that is what the Bible says, that their fathers are sin and they are not. And the iniquity has come upon the children. Seven has ruled upon them. Am I talking to somebody? Seven has ruled upon them. You see, your destiny was back in, was back in, whilst you were not born. Am I talking to somebody? Your destiny was back in, on an evil altar before you were born. That's why things are happening and you don't know how. Things are happening and you don't know how. You think you are doing everything possible to make things happen in your life. But the more you try, the more you fail. The more you try, the more you fail. The more you try, the more you fail. Why? Because there is a false evidence. There is a false evidence. Some of you, look at this man of God. A man of God. Use the destiny of the children as a collateral. That's why some of us, hmm, it's only one particular person. One, one, one group of people in the family. One particular family. They are the only person who are making progress in the family. 
Do you know why? They have used the destiny of others uh, as exchange of wealth. In exchange of wealth, in exchange of progress, in exchange of value. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. So they are the only person succeeding in the family. They are the only person progressing in the family. Am I talking to somebody? A man of God went and borrowed money and used the, the life of the children, the destiny of the children, the future of the children as a collateral. Wickedness in higher places. That did, immediately the man died. The borrowers came to take the children to, into captivity. They came to take the children away. That's before you say some of you. There are some people in your family. You see that house you are living. You see that your uncle. You see that your that your auntie. You see that your own, your friend, your friend, your friend. Some of them, they went into witchcraft cover. They said, look, we are not going to kill this man. We will not kill this girl. We will not kill this woman. Have him destroyed. Let him toil. Let him suffer. Let him labor without any wages. And give us position. So some families, their marriage has used as a collateral in every position in which can govern. You see that sickness, eh? That sickness that we have been battling with for years now. It's not the mind of God. It's not the mind of God. It's not coming from God. An enemy was behind it. Somebody has used your life, has used your health as a collateral to gain power, to gain promotion in the witchcraft coven. Somebody has used your health as a collateral to gain power and promotion on a demonic altar, on an evil altar. Evidence. He is my aunt. He is my niece. My nephew. I will not kill him. Because people will know. Or people may know that I am the one who is responsible for his death. So I will I will sacrifice his marriage. I will sacrifice her marriage. I will sacrifice her job. That is why the other time that you were employed, it hasn't taken you three months. The job finished. The job gone, gone out, out will drop out of your hand. Slip out of your hand. And you, you don't know what is happening. And you, you, were, you were like, should, should I quit? Hallelujah, somebody. Am I talking to somebody? Evil accusation. Every evidence the enemy is using against us, against your marriage, against your finance, against your progress. You think this promise and fail? They will promise you they will never redeem. They will promise you they will never redeem. I am prophesying to you that it will not happen again. If only you believe, if only you believe that I am a man of God sent from God ha, to preach the word of God to you and to proclaim liberty to you tonight, it will not rise again because the Bible says affliction shall not arise the second time. Am I talking to somebody? Affliction shall not arise the second time. After tonight, eh, your finance will receive turn around. Your health will receive restoration and healing. That marriage will begin to work from tonight. I don't know who has sacrificed your marriage in a witchcraft covenant on an evil altar that you will never find peace in that marriage. But I come in the power of Jehovah with the oil upon my head and upon my father, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that you are coming out. You are coming out. You are breaking forth. You are breaking through. I see you navigating. God is taking you through. God is seeing you through. In the name of the Lord Jesus. How am I talking to somebody? Some trusted in horses. Some trusted in chariot. But we shall remember the name of our God. For the name of God.
for them the name of our God is a strong tower. The righteous run unto him and they are safe. Child of God, you are not safe to be enslaved. Child of God, you are not born to fail. You are not born to fail. You are not born to fail. You are born to dominate. You are born to conquer. You are born to win. You are on the winning side. That is why no matter how hard they try, they will never win. They will never prevail. I said they will not win. They will not prevail. They will not win. They will not prevail. We override, we overrule. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Evidence. False evidence. Accuser, any man who is accusing you, accusing you to your helpers. Oh my God! I wish somebody could understand me tonight. I wish somebody could somebody could understand me tonight. See, let us leave aside hatred. Let us leave aside judgment, and let us face the reality. Am I talking to somebody? Let us face the reality. Because you cannot do anything about the truth. Because what is truth is truth. Am I talking to somebody? He that the Lord has set aside, he has set aside. So let us face the reality. And let us let adhere to the truth. Let's kill to the truth. And we will navigate through. You see, division, judgment, is what is putting disgrace, shame, upon the, upon the church and the children of God. Am I talking to somebody? Accusation. Accusers. Who is accusing me? To my helper. Who is accusing me? To my, my, my husband. Who is accusing me? To, my, to my, my, my wife. Who is accusing me? To, my, to the helper of my death level. In the name of Jesus. They will backfire. It will backfire. It will backfire. It will backfire. In the name of Jesus. They will fall and they will never rise up. They will fall and they will never rise up. Am I talking to somebody? False accusation. So now we are taking every evidence they are using against us. We are taking it from their hand. Any evidence, every evidence, every fact, the thing they gather about us, which they are using to accuse us, which they are using to run us down, in the name of Jesus, they will not succeed. They will not pro proceed. They will not succeed. They will not progress. In the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Every accusation, every info evidence, every evidence the enemy is using against us, it will not stand. It will not hold. Because Bible said, the righteous shall fall seven times, but he shall arise again. He said, the righteous shall fall seven times, but he shall arise again. He said, ha, ha, there is a hope for the tree that when it is cut down, ah, at the mercy of the sand of the water, it shall spring forth again. I see somebody springing forth. I see you, I see you germinating. I see you bearing new fruit. I see you germinating. Ah, they have made a mistake. The greatest mistake they have ever made is that they have just cut you, they did not approach you. Hamaru Katawa. I said they have just cut you. They did not approach you. <laughs> the greatest mistake the enemy have ever made is that they have just cut you. They did not approach you. But because they just approach, they just cut you. And they did not approach you. You were not approached at the mercy of the scent of water. <laughs> They have just they cut you. They do not approach you. The moment your root is still in the soil. Oh, thank be to God that our root is still in the soil. Our faith is still connected to Christ. Our faith is still connected to God. Our faith is still connected to Christ. Our faith is still connected to the heaven. That thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God that our root is still in the soil. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. At the scent of water, at the mercy of water, we 
shall spring forth again. We shall spring forth again. We shall spring forth again. Those who stigmatize you, eh, those who cause you havoc and pain yesterday, when you see them, tell them that a prophet of God said, you have made a mistake. You have, not, you have made a mistake not to approach me. You have just cut me off. I am springing forth again. I am springing forth again. I am coming up again. Ah, the righteous are for seven times, but they shall arise again. Child of God, I prophesy to somebody that at the mercy of water, at the mercy of water, you shall spring forth again. Don't let your man go hold. Oh, I go to the tomatoes. Oh, I go The enemies are disappointed. Your enemies are disappointed. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. You are unquenchable. Nobody can quench you. Nobody can stop you. Because God on your side, you are more than a conqueror. God on your side, you are more than a victor. Am I talking to somebody? The one in Christ is majority. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, someone. Let's proceed. We are going to pray some, some governmental strategic prayers tonight. We are going to enter into the kingdom of the enemy. We are going to enter into the hideout of those accusers. Tonight, we are going to force them to confess. Am I talking to somebody since the days of John the Baptist until now? Until now, the kingdom of God suffered violent and only the violence are taken by force. Since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violent. It's only the violence has taken it by force. So tonight, we are putting, we are mounting pressure. We are mounting pressure on the enemy. It's either they quit or they will die. It's either they release it or they will die. Anyone who will not release your blessing tonight, anyone who will not release your progress tonight, Anyone who will release your fortune to you tonight, we will settle them with death. Am I talking to somebody? When Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, and when Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel to go, one thing the Lord has done to settle the case is to settle them with the Red Sea. Tonight, eh, we are going to invoke the Red Sea. We are going to settle our enemy with the Red Sea. Am I talking to somebody? Enough is enough. The enemy has messed up, messed up with us for, for, for long now. We will keep quiet. Instead of us to rise up and fight the enemy, we have become an enemy to one another. That is why the other religion they are gaining ground more than the Christians. The other religions are gaining ground more than we the Christians. Why? Because we are divided, hatred, pain against one another has put us into, into a condition of distress and rejection, pain and setback. Bible said another day that kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. The kingdom that is divided against itself, it shall not stand. Am I talking to somebody? So we must rise to our feet. That's what I always said. When I come online and I am praying, I am preaching, I am not talking to everybody. I am talking to the believers of God. I am talking to people who are hungry, who want something to happen in their life. Am I talking to somebody? You don't judge the book by the cover. You judge the book by the content. Am I talking to somebody? Let's continue. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's open our Bible to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter number three. I feel like prophesying to somebody. If you have any prayer requests, you can, you can send to us. We will pray with you. If you have any prayer requests, make it known to us. I will pray with you. If I see anything, I will tell you. Am I talking to somebody? We are not here at the mercy of error or at the mercy of pers uh, 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 personal choice. We are called by God. We are born to do this. And we are not afraid, we are not ashamed to do it. If you have any prayer requests, I am a prophet of God. We are not boasting, we know what we carry. Send your prayer request. We will pray with you. If God reveals something, we will tell you. Then you will know that the prophet is risen among us. I can feel the atmosphere, the atmosphere of prayer. We are we are conquering, we are dominating. We are conquering, we are dominating. A time is coming. The mount of the Lord shall be set on high. 
and all nations shall run to a flow and come to see the mount of God. For upon that mountain there shall be signs and wonders. Am I talking to somebody? Grace is not grass. <laughs> Zechariah. Makarobo Sindelebe. Zechariah chapter number three. After this, we are going to pray. Zechariah 3, 1 to 14. Who is using any evidence against me? Who is the one? Present your cause. Our Lord shall answer. You see, you have not have anybody to speak for you. That's why the enemy is messing up with you. But tonight, I have heard myself to speak to you and to speak for you. Am I talking to somebody? You see, the problem that the Israelites had in, the, in their captivity in the days of their exile was not God refusing to deliver them. It was because a man to deliver them was not found. They, 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 they are, they are, they, their suffering was, was, was prolonged because of an inavailability of man. Man was not available. The moment God found a man, deliverance came. Ha! Let me tell you, your deliverance might not be where you are seeking it from. This is a spiritual statement. Your deliverance might not be in where, might not lie, might not lie in the hand of where you are looking it or you are seeking it from. Bible said, and the, and the woman with the issue of blood, he said, I have wasted my money. I have spent all that I have. I sold all my properties, my possession, just to cure myself from this blood flow. Yet, no answer. But a day came, a young man, a young boy, a 30 years old guy he was just passing by by the name Jesus Christ. And this woman said to herself, I have been hearing about this man. This man was around while I was selling my properties. This man was around while I was, I was visiting people that I think they are able by appearance to help me. Yet nothing happened. Now that I sold everything that I had, now that I sold all my properties, now that I sold all my possessions, and I am left with nothing, I will once again, I will once again put my faith into work, put my faith into motion. And she said to herself, if I may be able, if only I may be able to touch the hem of this man, I believe that today I am not holding any money. I believe that today I'm not holding any possession. But I am sure that the God of this man will cure me from my sickness, will, will cure me from my plague, will cure, me, will cure me from my sickness. And the Bible said, and he was, she was able to navigate through the troops. She navigated through the troops. She sneaked through the troops and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the moment she touched the garment, Bible said, and Jesus talked and he said, Something happened. And he said, Something happened. Somebody has touched me. Oh, somebody has touched me. And Peter said to him, Man of God, Rabbi, our Father, what are you saying that somebody has touched you? We are many. So many people are, are, are touching you. So many people are many with you. So many people are trooping on you. They are pressing on you. Every hand is touching you. Why are you now saying, a hand has touched me? And he said, you cannot understand. This hand is not an ordinary hand. This hand is not like the other hand. This hand is a different hand. This hand is a unique hand. Because the power has gone out of me. As you are hearing the sound of my voice, something is entering into you. Something is coming to you. Something is entering to you. Something is happening to you because I could hear the angel of God saying to me, a power has just been released. An anointing has just been released. A spirit has just been released. Favor has just been released. Grace has just been released. I see grace being activated in somebody's life. I see grace being activated in somebody's life. From tonight, you'll begin to experience the strength manifestation. Manifesting that to put your life to the next level. Manifesting that to set your life on a platform 
platform of glory, on the platform of honor, on the platform of celebration. Am I talking to somebody? Bible said, and the woman said, one more time I will say, I will do this unto myself. I will press through. I will navigate through. If only I could be able to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. If only I could be able, child of God, be able tonight, be able this day, say to yourself, enough is enough. Once upon a time, Jesus Christ met a blind man. And when he met the blind man, he was with his disciples. And the disciple asked him, man of God, Rabbi, our father, the teacher, what sin did this man committed? What was his fault? What was his fault? What was his, his sin before going through this? He was blind from the womb of the mother. And Jesus said to him, He said, What offense has he committed? What offense has he committed? And Jesus answered them and said, He has not committed any offense. This was made to glorify the Son to the name of the Father. This was made to glorify the Son to the name of the Father. Let me tell you, your condition is ascribed to a person. Uh, that condition in which you are, let me tell you, it is ascribed to a person. It's only one person. That person might be around you. That person might be that might be in your house with you. That person might be your pastor. That you are despising. That you have no respect for. That you have no regard for. That person might be the person next, in, next to your house. That evangelist who is shouting on the street every now and then because you see that he's riding bicycle. Because you see that he's riding moto. Because you see is working who is working so you don't have any respect for him Jesus was not driving in G-Wagon Jesus was not driving in Lancusa he was not driving Mercedes Benz he was just walking by before the woman said to him herself I will once again oh put my faith into work if able if, if only I'll be able to touch the hem of this man I'll be made whole what is your faith saying what is your faith saying to you and Jesus said to them this man that has not seen neither the father nor the mother. He said this thing was made to bring glory to the name of the Lord. Let me tell you some, somebody tonight that man was dead for so many years. That man was dead for so many years. So many physicians have attended to him. So many great men of God have attended to him. So many intellectuals have attended to him. So many apostles and doctors eh, that have attended to him but there was, there was nothing to show. No avail. But it took a man. Eh, it took a man. Just a 13 years old man. Just a 30 years old guy who was unmatured in the kingdom, who was unmatured in the church. To man is un un unmature, but to God, he is the prince of peace, the king of glory, the I am that I am, the eternal rock of ages, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the creator and the maker, the one that knoweth the beginning from the end. He said, This cause, this thing, this sickness. The problem was not from the man, not the mother, not the father. It was made to glorify the son, the son, the son, to the father. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Bible said at the gate of beautiful, there was a man sitting down there, begging for an arm every day, begging for an arm every day. But there came a day, the gate of beautiful, the gate of beautiful was a beautiful gate because the church was beautiful, the entrance was beautiful, everything about the church was beautiful. So he was uh, he was sitting in the place of beautiful yet looking ugly. Ah. He was sitting in the place of beautiful, yet looking destitute, rejection, rejected, cast down, suppressed and depressed, yet he was sitting at the gate of beautiful. That's why the other day, the people of Jericho called the attention of the prophet of God. They said, man of God, the situation of this city is pleasant, as you can see. Everything about this city is pleasant, as you can see. But the water is not. The water is causing abortion. The water is killing people. The water is causing sickness and disease. And the ground is barren. He said, he said the ground is barren. The situation of the city is pleasant. Look at your life. A beautiful woman like you. A beautiful woman like you. You, you have anything and everything that it takes uh, to be married, to be in the house of a man, to be called wife. Uh, but look at your wife. You are so beautiful. The situation is pleasant. Everything about you, everything about you, your makeup is 100%. Uh, your, your, your speech is eloquent. Uh, you can speak all the vocabularies. Uh, very intellectual, uh, very God-fearing. Uh, but look at your life. Uh, your life is at the verge of, of, of destroying. Your life is at the verge of destruction. 
Am I talking to somebody at the verge of rejection and failure? Look at your life and you keep on asking yourself a question What is happening to me? Am I not looking beautiful? Sometimes you take mirror, you watch yourself, you ask yourself, What at all? What at all do men want again to see me, to see on me before proposing to me? What at all? That was the same thing happening to the man that was sitting at the gate of beautiful. He was sitting at the gate of beautiful. The place was so nice. The place was so beautiful. Great men were entering there. Men of valor was entering there. Men of great honor was entering there. Ah, men of substance were entering there. Yet he sat down there. The place that miracles are happening. A place that wonders are taking place. A place that poor people came and they became richer. A place that people who are sick came and they became bolder. He was sitting at the same place. Yet he was a layman. Yes, he was a layman. But the Bible said it came to a day when Peter, James, and John was about to enter into the temple and they saw this man sitting down there and he asked them God, he asked them money. And Peter said to him, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you in the name of Christ Jesus, whom you have crucified and buried and arose on the third day and I ascended to the heaven and was sitting there in the right hand of the Father. And a name given to him among all the other names that by the mention of the name Jesus every nail shall bow and every tongue shall confess in heaven on earth and beneath the earth that Jesus alone is the key to the God of the Father in the name of that name Jesus rise to your feet and walk for now I speak to you in the name of Jesus wherever you are saying before any evidence the enemy has used against you to put you in that condition every evidence the enemy has used against you to put you in that mess Every evidence the enemy has used against you to destroy your life, to destroy your marriage, to destroy your life, to put out your life. In the name of Jesus, rise to your feet and walk. Rise to your feet and walk. I see you rolling your bed. I see you rolling your bed. Sickness is no longer your portion. If you believe it, I want you to touch your screen right now. And the power is coming out. The power of God is coming out. He said when he spoke, I heard the Lord spoke. And the Spirit of God entered into me. He sent for the word and the word saved them. He delivered them. Saved them from all their oppressions. As I am speaking the word. The beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And everything was made through the word by the word. Ah, the word is Jesus Christ. Am I talking to somebody tonight? In the name of the name of Jesus. In the name above every other name. Jesus Christ. I put an end to your struggle. I put an end to your struggle. Every spirit of wasted effort. Every spirit of wasted effort. The same thing others are doing and they are prospering. You do the same thing. You did the same thing and you are failed. You try, you are failed. You try, you are failed. You try, you are failed. I want to tell you somebody, don't quit. I said don't quit. Don't quit. Lad. Begin to push. Begin to press up. For your day has come. The glory of God has risen among us. The glory of God has risen upon your life. I see you navigating. I see you rising. In the name of Jesus, you are standing from that gate of beautiful. You will never beg again. You will not beg again. You will not beg again. I see you entering in that chapel. Land. I see you entering in that gate of beautiful. You are entering there. You are entering that door. You are entering that room. You are entering that house. You are entering the parliament house. I see you entering the parliament house. I see you entering that office that rejected you the other day. The same office that rejected you the other day. I see them sending for you. I see them sending for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lebaru Sakata. Every false evidence, every accuser, every accuser, every accuser in my father's house, in my mother's house, in the name of Jesus, we put an end to your work, we put an end to your effort, we put an end to your oppression, we put an end to your oppression in the name of Jesus. It is our time to dominate, it is our time to increase, it is our time to replenish, it is our time to conquer. No more again, no more again, no more again, no more again. Bible said to subvert a man in his talk of the Lord approved it not. Arikete Basandaya. Let's take the last reading and we will pray. Be connected. Be connected. Share the broadcast. It will not, you will not lose anything. For sharing this broadcast, you will not lose anything. You are just helping somebody. This message, this broadcast might not be useful to you. 
But I tell you, you sharing it to somebody, it will, it will do somebody a great favor. Hallelujah. You will get together before you realize that today broadcast you have shared has added to your cause. You will end, you, you enter heaven. You will get to heaven before realizing that you have done something great tonight. Hallelujah. When the Lord Jesus Christ has, shall see your face and say, Well done, you faithful and, 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 and honest servant. And you will ask him, what have I done? Since I came to this, I have never won a soul. And we said, look at that, those souls. The day my servant was preaching, and we shared the broadcast. Those are the people the message has blessed. It, it was credited into your account. Rasa <laughs> Kaburia Zechariah chapter number three. Hallelujah. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before an angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. There are powers of resistance. Satan standing, the Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Not even the left, the left hand, the right hand to resist him. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand block out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto, unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused that iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with with chain of raiment. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Bible says once upon a time that the Lord has decided to prepare a vessel for himself. The Lord has decided to bless a man, to change the story of a man, to change the identity of a man, to elevate somebody by the name Joshua. And he said to the priest, he said, take Joshua and change the garment. Bible said he was putting a filthy cloth, a dirty cloth, a cloth of disgrace, disgrace, garment of disgrace, garment of disgrace, garment of shame. He was putting on garment of disgrace. He was, he was putting on garments of shame, garment of rejection. Some of us. <laughs> Whenever somebody promises us, they never redeem. Whenever somebody promises us, they never redeem. People will promise you, they will not redeem. They will promise to help you, they will never do it. You don't know why. There is a filthy garment. I said, there is a filthy garment. All oh, this while, the Lord wants to use Joshua. The Lord's eyes was upon Joshua, but he could not use it because Joshua was putting on a, a filthy garment. Well, from that filthy garment, if you trace the genealogy of Joshua, you will discover that uh, there is something in the, in the tribe. Uh, there is something in the bloodline. Hallelujah, somebody. There is something in the bloodline. There is a curse in the bloodline. For that reason, uh, the garment, uh, the garment is not talking about physical garments you can see with your eye. The garment is talking about the spiritual, the, the spiritual makeup, your spiritual makeup, your spiritual apparel. He said there is a filthy garment that Joseph put on, and the day God decided, oh my God, the day God decided to help Joshua out of this filthy garment, the day God decided, the day the answer of Joshua was heard. And God decided to put away this shame, to put away this rejection, to put away this pain, to put away this sickness, to put away this rising and falling, to put, to, to put away the disgrace. That was the same time Satan has risen against him. Bible said, and Satan stand at his right hand to resist him. What is resisting you? Who is resisting you? Every spirit of resistance. Every spirit of resistance in your family resisting you from moving forward, resisting you from rising, resisting you from, from progressing in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus, I invoke the oil of my ordination and I speak as the prophet of the Most High in the name of the Lord Jesus. From tonight, I see God putting them off. I see God destroying them. I see God grinding them into ashes in the name of Jesus. I don't know the power. I don't know the forces. I don't know the man. I don't know the woman who is against you, who is resisting you from getting married, from getting that job, from getting into that institution, from getting that ap ap application. Am I talking to somebody? From getting that employment, I prophesy to you every spirit of resistance, every spirit of resistance in the name of Jesus that resisted your mother, resisted your father, resisted your uncle, resisted your forefathers. They will not resist you. They will not stop you. They will not resist you. They will not stop you. I decree and declare by the apostolic and the prophetic mandate and I set you free in the name of Jesus. I set you free in the name of Jesus. I set you free. Every resistance is resisted. Every resistance is resisted. Bible said when the Lord ascended on high, he, he held the captivity captives. We hold every captivity captives. We hold every captive captive tonight. Every captivity captive. Anything that is holding your family captive, we hold them captive tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, who shall say a word and it shall come to pass. If the Lord commanded it not, who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. If the Lord has not said it, Father, from tonight I prophesy upon your children. Bible, let me understand that the enemy has risen against Joshua. The enemy has stood at the right side of Joshua to resist him from, from entering into his glory. Any power resisting you from entering into your glory, from entering into your next level, I prophesy to you as a child of God. I prophesy to you as a man of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. They will not resist you, Ransom. They will not resist you, Ransom. You are irresistible. Irresistible. You are irresistible. You are irresistible. You are irresistible. If you believe, I want to see. I want to see your share. I want to see your share. I want to see your amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, shout amen right now. Shout amen right now. Shout amen right now. God is turning your life around. God is turning your situation around. I can see something happening right now. I can see God taking you to another level. I see you flying on all high. I see you flying cruising on the wings of the eagle. God has to prophesy to somebody watching me right now who will come. Across this, this broadcast eh, and lay it upon himself to share that you will cruise, eh, you will fly on the eagle's wings. Eh. Bible said, eh, as far as our eyes can see, eh, that is how the Lord shall make us. I see progress coming your way this year. I see progress eh, this few months, this few weeks eh, ah, to enter into next year. Eh, I see progress coming. Eh. It is not too late. Eh. I say it is not too late. Eh. It is not too late. Eh. One week is enough for God to do that which you cannot do for yourself. Eh. I said, one week is enough. Eh. It's too enough for God. God to do that which you cannot do to yourself. He is capable and able to do all things. He took only six days, seven days to create everything. Am I talking to somebody? He took only six days and finished everything. How much more? How much more two weeks? How much more one week? How much more one month? In the name of the Lord Jesus, that prayer you have been praying, God said I should tell you it has been answered. I said it has been answered. <laughs> I want to see your amen. I want to see your amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your prayer has been answered. Let me tell you, if you want to take this anointing, I pray, I pray for you that before this year will come to an end, any tree that is not planted by God, that is bearing fruit in your life, any tree that is not planted by God, that is bearing fruit in the family, I approve them now. By the oil of my ordination, they are uprooted. 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 Those who penalize you, who cause you pain and havoc, eh, all the past years, eh, they will not enter 2022 with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you believe, eh, shout amen. If you believe, eh, type amen. Bible said, and the God said, take Joshua to the mountain. And pull off the filthy garment, the garment of disgrace that makes people to reject him. That wherever he goes, he was rejected. The people do reject him. The garment that made people to mock him. That wherever he goes, people do mock at him. When the time has come, take him to the mountain and remove the garment of shame. That garment that is causing him. Causing her not to get married. You are beautiful. Excellently. Created in the image of God. Adorned with glory. Massively. Wonderfully. 
expressly. In fact, the raw replica of God, the raw identity and common copy of God. In fact, if they see you anytime that men, people see you, they give thanks to God. That what a God, what a creature, what a creation. But look at your life. That was the same thing that happened to Joshua. But tonight, it will not happen to you again. That was the same thing that happened to Joshua. Anything that has put you in this condition, in the name of Jesus, we shut them up. We shut them up. We shut them up. We shut them up. The God of Ark of Covenant Miracle Ministry, you told me that you are sending me forth to deliver the captives, to heal the broken hearts. You tell me you are sending me to break the prison doors and to set the captives free. This is the time and the hour has come for your people to be liberated. So I prophesy and I pray in the name of Jesus. As the enemy rose against Joshua to stop him, to resist him, to, 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 to accuse him. Ha! The enemy was accusing Joshua. The enemy heard the angel in contempt that you don't have any right to remove that garment from off him. You don't have any right to take off that garment from him. Yeah, I, I enjoy it when I see him in that filthy garment, in that condition of mockery, in that condition of rejection, in that condition of pain. I am always happy when I see him. Why would, why would an enemy, Satan, come down to protest, to accuse the deliverance, the promotion, the upgradement, the upliftment, the elevation of someone who God decided, God decided to bless. Satan is not fair. The enemy we are dealing with is not fair. But in the name of Jesus, Bible said, and Michael referred the battle back to God. He referred the battle back to the superior, the authority, the Elohim, the El Elon, the Adonai, El Shaddai, El Bimor, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rufeta, Jehovah Makadeshi, the lion from the tribe of Judah, and said, May the Lord rebuke you. He said, May the Lord rebuke you. And that day, the garment was taken away. I pray for you, and I prophesy to you every garment, any garment that is that the enemy has put on you that puts you in a place of rejection and pain any garment that the enemy is resisting you from getting rid of from getting rid of from getting rid of in the name of jesus i set them ablaze 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 in the name of jesus we are going to pray if you can speak in the to in, in the other language other tongue. I want you to open your mouth as we begin to pray. Likata Maria Kasunda. Lebrekete Zukete Yama Rikata. Masuria Katama Rekete Yama. Shaman de Lebre Sukete Yamaha. Maseke Te Labrando Barusa. Ikwa Barasike Te Libaha. Manderike Sunde Libatuba. Yekete Zebrando Labaha. Marokoto Ziba Likete. Mama Mayande Libarusata. La Marokoto Basindebe. Thank you, Spirit of God. We are going to pray. Taking our prayer from Revelation. Revelation chapter number 12. Chapter number 12. Chapter number 12. Reading from verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angel. And prevailed not. Verse 8 and prevail not. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray. Shall my father, my maker, as I pray right now, any power, every demon, every ancestral power, every ancestral projection, every ancestral declaration, as ancestral decrees, taking hold on my destiny, that the enemy is holding as an evidence against me, evidence using to accuse me. In the name of Jesus, Bible said they fought and they did not prevail. As I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, I put them in jeopardy. I destroy them. I put an end to them. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth, lay katabara sandereberebebe. Ilegadegebereberebe. Sondo ikapa. Lekaba. 
baru zebrende bali katu bari kata shaman darega de sinda baragatoa e kabare ke sende baruta e baragade inda mari kete la branda baru katu basende bali kete bible said the dragon fought back but they prevail not in the name of jesus i prevail they will not prevail i prevail they will not prevail i prevail i prevail over poverty i prevail over rejection i prevail over pain i prevail over every shame i prevail over every setback every barrier every setback set before me i prevail 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 as you are praying i see you prevailing as you are praying i see you prevailing bible said in the book of isaiah as soon as zion travel she brought forth her children as you are traveling right now i see you bearing fruit i see you bearing fruit you are bringing forth your children you are bringing forth that business that job is bringing forth that door that door that door is being opened and the barusa pandia likete baragade in jesus mighty name amen he prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven neither was their place found anymore in heaven your next prayer is tonight let the space of the enemy the place they have occupied in my life the place the enemy has occupied in my life Occupy in my business, occupy in my marriage, occupy in my progress, occupy in my finance, occupy in my health. They say, and their place was no, it was found no more. Any place the enemy has occupied in my life, tonight as I call the name of the Lord and I pray, vacate by fire, vacate by fire, vacate by fire, vacate by fire. Likete barukata, le branda basukete yaba, le barusa brande bala, ikabare se bandua, ikatara basinde baluta, jamande rike tebe. Rekete kabando balikete, amando riketu zapanta, arikete balikata ba. I see them giving away, I see them giving away, I see them vacating. They are vacating, they are vacating, they are vacating your life, they are vacating your finance, they are vacating your marriage, they are vacating the life of your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God said, I should tell you, don't curse that child, don't curse that guy, don't curse that woman, don't curse that lady, don't curse that girl, don't curse that boy, because this is not their fault. It's the enemy that is having them. He's using them against you for them to be destroyed. But the Lord said, I should tell you, the enemy has fought, the dragon has fought, and they were cut down. They were not prevailed, and their place was not found anymore. Tonight, the enemy is vacated. In the space and every space, they occupy, he occupy in your life, in your marriage, in your career, in your destiny, in your finances. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. As we are connected right now, I want to touch the screen, touch the screen of your mobile set, and the Lord God shall touch you, wherever is paining you, wherever is happening to you, whatever is happening to you, as you touch the screen by faith, the anointing will locate you, next time, next week, you will share a testimony, in the name of Jesus, thank you Father, they are placed or found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, he was cast out, that old serpent, the dragon, that is the devil, he was cast out. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you that anything that is representing you in the witchcraft cover, I pray, I, I pray for you, anything that is representing you on an evil altar in a witchcraft cover, tonight in the name of Jesus, I cut them off. I set them out. I set them ablaze. I set them ablaze. I enforce the power of God. I enforce the blood. I enforce the blood. I superimpose the blood. I superimpose the blood. I enforce the blood in the name of Jesus. I enforce the blood in the name of Jesus. I superimpose the blood in the name of Jesus. You are coming out. You are coming out. That altar is set ablaze. That altar is set ablaze in the name of Jesus. If you are sick in any aspect, in any part of your body, I want to pray for you. If you are sick, if you are looking for any job opportunity, if you are looking for marital progress, marital grace, by the grace of God, my marriage is working, and no devil can put it off because it is established on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I carry the grace to speak to you for your marriage to work, 
I carry the grace to speak to you for you to get married. So if you have any such problem, I want you to join your faith with me. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I've connected heaven. I've connected the throne of mercy. I've connected the throne of grace. Do unto me as my heart desire. Take away every reproach. Take away every pain. Take away every sickness. Take away every rejection. Take away every block, wayward block of my way, of my life. Father Lord Jesus, tonight I believe in you that you are the author and the finisher. Lord God Almighty, you have my life manual. You have my life manual. You have my life manual. Lord God, navigate my life. Propel my life. Propel my life. Propel my life. Propel my life. To get to where you want it to be. In the name of Jesus, I receive my healing. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my testimony. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. As you pray this prayer with me, you are, you are delivered. You are free. You are healed. As you pray this prayer with me now, you are the next in line to testify. And I see you testifying. Share this broadcast. And God will bless you. Amen. Once again, my name is Prophet John Bright Shapume, the leader of Act of Covenant Miracle Ministry International. Bando, we are no longer stationed in Alloy. By the special grace of God, God is putting his tabernacle. So very soon, we will move into our tabernacle, our, our auditorium. And we are located in Bando, Kujar Road of the Road, the Gravel Pit. Soon you will find our signboard over there. God bless you. God help you. May God do unto you what you, can, what you cannot do to yourself. May God take you to where your effort and your strength cannot send you to. Stay blessed, stay input. Share the broadcast. God will bless and prosper you. Till we meet next Sunday. Shalom Ebenezer. Bye-bye. Thank you, Spirit of God.